a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Influenza Influenza, commonly known as the flu, is an infectious disease caused by an influenza virus. Symptoms can be mild to severe. The most common symptoms include a high fever, runny nose, sore throat, muscle pains, headache, coughing, and feeling tired. These symptoms typically begin two days after exposure to the virus and most last less than a week. The cough, however, may last for more than two weeks. In children, there may be nausea and vomiting, but these are not common in adults. Nausea and vomiting occur more commonly in the unrelated infection gastroenteritis, which is sometimes inaccurately referred to as stomach flu or the 24-hour flu. Complications of influenza may include viral pneumonia, secondary bacterial pneumonia, sinus infections, and worsening of previous health problems such as asthma or heart failure. Three types of influenza viruses affect people, called type A, type B, and type C. Usually, the virus is spread through the air from coughs or sneezes. This is believed to occur mostly over relatively short distances. It can also be spread by touching surfaces contaminated by the virus and then touching the mouth or eyes. A person may be infectious to others both before and during the time they are showing symptoms. The infection may be confirmed by testing the throat, sputum, or nose for the virus. A number of rapid tests are available. However, people may still have the infection if the results are negative. A type of polymerase chain reaction that detects the virus RNA is more accurate. Frequent hand washing reduces the risk of viral spread. Wearing a surgical mask is also useful. Yearly vaccinations against influenza are recommended by the World Health Organization for those at high risk. The vaccine is usually effective against three or four types of influenza. It is usually well tolerated. A vaccine made for one year may not be useful in the following year. Since the virus evolves rapidly, antiviral drugs such as the neuraminidas inhibitor of Seltamiva, among others, have been used to treat influenza. Their benefits in those who are otherwise healthy do not appear to be greater than their risks. No benefit has been found in those with other health problems. Influenza spreads around the world in a yearly outbreak, resulting in about 3 to 5 million cases of severe illness and about 250,000 to 500,000 deaths. In the northern and southern parts of the world, outbreaks occur mainly in winter while in areas around the equator outbreaks may occur at any time of the year. Death occurs mostly in the young, the old and those with other health problems. Larger outbreaks known as pandemics are less frequent. In the 20th century, three influenza pandemics occurred, Spanish influenza in 1918, Asian influenza in 1957, and Hong Kong influenza in 1968. The World Health Organization declared an outbreak of a new type of influenza A-H1N1 to be a pandemic in June 2009. Influenza may also affect other animals, including pigs, horses, and birds. Signs and Symptoms Approximately 33% of people with influenza are asymptomatic. Symptoms of influenza can start quite suddenly one to two days after infection. Usually the first symptoms are chills or a chilly sensation. But fever is also common early in the infection, with body temperatures ranging from 38 to 39 degrees Celsius. Many people are so ill that they are confined to bed for several days, with aches and pains throughout their bodies, which are worse in their backs and legs. Symptoms of influenza may include, it can be difficult to distinguish between the common cold and influenza in the early stages of these infections. Influenza is a mixture of symptoms of common cold and pneumonia, body ache, headache, and fatigue. Diarrhea is not normally a symptom of influenza in adults, although it has been seen in some human cases of the H5N1, bird flu, and can be a symptom in children. The symptoms most reliably seen in influenza are shown in the adjacent table. Since antiviral drugs are effective in treating influenza if given early, it can be important to identify cases early. Of the symptoms listed above, the combinations of fever with cough, sore throat and or nasal congestion can improve diagnostic accuracy. Two decision analysis studies suggest that during local outbreaks of influenza, the prevalence will be over 70%, and thus patients with any of these combinations of symptoms may be treated with neuraminidase inhibitors without testing. 
even in the absence of a local outbreak. Treatment may be justified in the elderly during the influenza season as long as the prevalence is over 15%. The available laboratory tests for influenza continue to improve. The United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention maintains an up-to-date summary of available laboratory tests. According to the CDC, rapid diagnostic tests have a sensitivity of 50-75% and specificity of 90-95% when compared with viral culture. These tests may be especially useful during the influenza season, but in the absence of a local outbreak or peri-influenza season. Occasionally, influenza can cause severe illness including primary viral pneumonia or secondary bacterial pneumonia. The obvious symptom is trouble breathing. In addition, if a child seems to be getting better and then relapses with a high fever, that is a danger sign, since this relapse can be bacterial pneumonia. Types of virus in virus classification influenza viruses are RNA viruses that make up three of the five genera of the family Orthomyxoviridae. These viruses are only distantly related to the human parainfluenza viruses, which are RNA viruses belonging to the paramyxovirus family that are a common cause of respiratory infections in children such as croup, but can also cause a disease similar to influenza in adults. A fourth family of influenza viruses has been proposed influenza D. The type species for this family is bovine influenza D virus which was first isolated in 2012. Influenza virus A This genus has one species, influenza A virus. Wild aquatic birds are the natural hosts for a large variety of influenza A. Occasionally, viruses are transmitted to other species and may then cause devastating outbreaks in domestic poultry or give rise to human influenza pandemics. The type A viruses are the most virulent human pathogens among the three influenza types and cause the severest disease. The influenza A virus can be subdivided into different serotypes based on the antibody response to these viruses, the serotypes that have been confirmed in humans, ordered by the number of known human pandemic deaths, are Influenza virus B This genus has one species, influenza B virus. Influenza B almost exclusively infects humans and is less common than influenza A. The only other animals known to be susceptible to influenza B infection are the seal and the ferret. This type of influenza mutates at a rate 2-3 times slower than type A and consequently is less genetically diverse, with only one influenza B serotype. As a result of this lack of antigenic diversity, a degree of immunity to influenza B is usually acquired at an early age. However, Influenza B mutates enough that lasting immunity is not possible. This reduced rate of antigenic change, combined with its limited host range, ensures that pandemics of influenza B do not occur. Influenza virus C This genus has one species, influenza C virus, which infects humans, dogs and pigs, sometimes causing both severe illness and local epidemics. However, Influenza C is less common than the other types and usually only causes mild disease in children. Structure, Properties, and Subtype Nomenclature Influenza viruses A, B and C are very similar in overall structure. The virus particle is 8120 nanometers in diameter, and usually roughly spherical, although filamentous forms can occur. These filamentous forms are more common in influenza C, which can form cord-like structures up to 500 micrometers long on the surfaces of infected cells. However, despite these varied shapes, the viral particles of all influenza viruses are similar in composition. These are made of a viral envelope containing two main types of glycoproteins, wrapped around a central core. The central core contains the viral RNA genome and other viral proteins that package and protect this RNA. RNA tends to be single-stranded, but in special cases it is double. Unusually for a virus, its genome is not a single piece of nucleic acid. Instead, it contains seven or eight pieces of segmented negative sense RNA, each piece of RNA containing either one or two genes, which code for a gene product. For example, the influenza A genome contains 11 genes on eight pieces of RNA, encoding for 11 proteins, hemagglutinin, neuraminidas, nucleoprotein, M1, M2, NS1, NS2, PA, PB1, 
PB1F2 and PB2. Hemagglutinin and neuraminidase are the two large glycoproteins on the outside of the viral particles. HA is a lectin that mediates binding of the virus to target cells and entry of the viral genome into the target cell, while Na is involved in the release of progeny virus from infected cells, by cleaving sugars that bind the mature viral particles. Thus, these proteins are targets for antiviral drugs. Furthermore, they are antigens to which antibodies can be raised. Influenza A viruses are classified into subtypes based on antibody responses to HA and NA. These different types of HA and NA form the basis of the H and N distinctions in, for example, H5N1. There are 16 H and 9 N subtypes known, but only H1, 2 and 3, and N1, and 2 are commonly found in humans. Replication Viruses can replicate only in living cells. Influenza infection and replication is a multi-step process. First, the virus has to bind to and enter the cell, then deliver its genome to a site where it can produce new copies of viral proteins and RNA, assemble these components into new viral particles, and, last, exit the host cell. Influenza viruses bind through hemagglutinin onto sialic acid sugars on the surfaces of epithelial cells, typically in the nose, throat, and lungs of mammals, and intestines of birds. After the hemagglutinin is cleaved by a protease, the cell imports the virus by endocytosis. The intracellular details are still being elucidated. It is known that virions converge to the microtubule organizing center, interact with acidic endosomes and finally enter the target endosomes for genome release. Once inside the cell, the acidic conditions in the endosome cause two events to happen. First, part of the hemagglutin and protein fuses the viral envelope with the vacuole's membrane, then the M2 ion channel allows protons to move through the viral envelope and acidify the core of the virus which causes the core to disassemble and release the viral RNA and core proteins. The viral RNA molecules, accessory proteins, and RNA-dependent RNA polymerase are then released into the cytoplasm. The M2 ion channel is blocked by amantadine drugs, preventing infection. These core proteins and form a complex that is transported into the cell nucleus where the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase begins transcribing complementary positive sense for a the VNA either is exported into the cytoplasm, and translated or remains in the nucleus. Newly synthesized viral proteins are either secreted through the Golgi apparatus onto the cell surface, or transported back into the nucleus to bind VNA and form new viral genome particles. Other viral proteins have multiple actions in the host cell, including degrading cellular mRNA and using the released nucleotides for VNA synthesis and also inhibiting translation of host cell VNAs, negative sense VNAs that form the genomes of future viruses, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, and other viral proteins are assembled into a virion. Hemagglutinin and neuraminidase molecules cluster into a bulge in the cell membrane. The VNA and viral core proteins leave the nucleus, and enter this membrane protrusion. The mature virus buds off from the cell in a sphere of host phospholipid membrane, acquiring hemagglutinin and neuraminidase with this membrane coat. As before, the viruses adhere to the cell through hemagglutinin. The mature viruses detach once their neuraminidase has cleaved sialic acid residues from the host cell. After the release of new influenza viruses, the host cell dies, because of the absence of RNA proofreading enzymes. The RNA-dependent RNA polymerase that copies the viral genome makes an error roughly every 10,000 nucleotides, which is the approximate length of the influenza VNA. Hence, the majority of newly manufactured influenza viruses are mutants. This causes antigenic drift, which is a slow change in the antigens on the viral surface over time. The separation of the genome into eight separate segments of VNA allows mixing or reassortment of VNAs if more than one type of influenza virus infects a single cell. The resulting rapid change in viral genetics produces antigenic shifts, which are sudden changes from one antigen to another. These sudden large changes allow the virus to infect new host species and quickly overcome protective immunity. This is important in the emergence of pandemics, as discussed below in the section on epidemiology. Transmission when an infected person sneezes or coughs more than half a million virus particles can be spread to those close by. In otherwise healthy adults, 
influenza virus shedding increases sharply one half to one day after infection, peaks on day two and persists, for an average total duration of five days, but can persist as long as nine days. In those who develop symptoms from experimental infection, symptoms and viral shedding show a similar pattern, but with viral shedding preceding illness by one day. Children are much more infectious than adults and shed virus from just before they develop symptoms until two weeks after infection. In immunocompromised people, viral shedding can continue for longer than two weeks. Influenza can be spread in three main ways, by direct transmission, the airborne route and through hand-to-eye, hand-to-nose, or hand-to-mouth transmission, either from contaminated surfaces or from direct personal contact such as a handshake. The relative importance of these three modes of transmission is unclear and they may all contribute to the spread of the virus. In the airborne route, the droplets that are small enough for people to inhale are 0.5 to 5 micrometers in diameter, and inhaling just one droplet might be enough to cause an infection. Although a single sneeze releases up to 40,000 droplets, most of these droplets are quite large and will quickly settle out of the air. How long influenza survives in airborne droplets seems to be influenced by the levels of humidity and UV radiation, with low humidity and a lack of sunlight in winter aiding its survival. As the influenza virus can persist outside of the body, it can also be transmitted by contaminated surfaces such as banknotes, doorknobs, light switches and other household items. The length of time the virus will persist on a surface varies, with the virus surviving for one to two days on hard non-porous surfaces such as plastic or metal, for about 15 minutes from dry paper tissues, and only 5 minutes on skin. However, if the virus is present in mucus, this can protect it for longer periods. Avian influenza viruses can survive indefinitely when frozen. They are inactivated by heating to 56 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 60 minutes, as well as by acids with low relative humidity. The lower air humidity in winter seems to be the main cause of seasonal influenza transmission in temperate regions. However, seasonal changes in infection rates also occur in tropical regions, and in some countries these peaks of infection are seen mainly during the rainy season. Seasonal changes in contact rates from school terms, which are a major factor in other childhood diseases such as measles and pertussis, may also play a role in the flu. A combination of these small seasonal effects may be amplified by dynamical resonance with the endogenous disease cycles. H5N1 exhibits seasonality in both humans and birds. An alternative hypothesis to explain seasonality in influenza infections is an effect of vitamin D levels on immunity to the virus. This idea was first proposed by Robert Edgar Hope Simpson in 1965. He proposed that the cause of influenza epidemics during winter may be connected to seasonal fluctuations of vitamin D, which is produced in the skin under the influence of solar UV radiation. This could explain why influenza occurs mostly in winter and during the tropical rainy season, when people stay indoors away from the sun, and their vitamin D levels fall. Epidemic and pandemic spread As influenza is caused by a variety of species and strains of viruses, in any given year some strains can die out while others create epidemics, while yet another strain can cause a pandemic. Typically, in a year's normal two flu seasons, there are between three and five million cases of severe illness and around 500,000 deaths worldwide, which by some definitions is a yearly influenza epidemic. Although the incidence of influenza can vary widely between years, approximately 36,000 deaths and more than 200,000 hospitalizations are directly associated with influenza every year in the United States. One method of calculating influenza mortality produced an estimate of 41,400 average deaths per year in the United United States between 1979 and 2001. Different methods in 2010 by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported a range from a low of about 3,300 deaths to a high of 49,000 per year. Roughly three times per century, a pandemic occurs, which infects a large proportion of the world's population, and can kill tens of millions of people. One study estimated that if a strain with similar virulence to the 1918 influenza emerged today, it could kill between 50 and 80 million people. 
New influenza virus is a constantly evolving by mutation or by reassortment. Mutations can cause small changes in the hemagglutinin and neuraminidase antigens on the surface of the virus. This is called antigenic drift, which slowly creates an increasing variety of strains until one evolves that can infect people who are immune to the pre-existing strains. This new variant then replaces the older strains as it rapidly sweeps through the human population, often causing an epidemic. However, since the strains produced by drift will still be reasonably similar to the older strains, some people will still be immune to them. In contrast, when influenza viruses reassort, they acquire completely new antigens, for example by reassortment between avian strains and human strains. This is called antigenic shift. If a human influenza virus is produced that has entirely new antigens, everybody will be susceptible and the novel influenza will spread uncontrollably, causing a pandemic. In contrast to this model of pandemics based on antigenic drift and shift, an alternative approach has been proposed where the periodic pandemics are produced by interactions of a fixed set of viral strains. With a human population with a constantly changing set of immunities to different viral strains. From a public health point of view, flu epidemics spread rapidly and are very difficult to control. Most influenza virus strains are not very infectious, and each infected individual will only go on to infect one or two other individuals. However, the generation time for influenza is extremely short, the time from a person becoming infected to when he infects the next person is only two days. The short generation time means that influenza epidemics generally peak at around two months and burn out after three months. The decision to intervene in an influenza epidemic therefore has to be taken early, and the decision is therefore often made on the back of incomplete data. Another problem is that individuals become infectious before they become symptomatic, which means that putting people in quarantine after they become ill is not an effective public health intervention. For the average person, viral shedding tends to peak on day 2 whereas symptoms peak on day 3. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?